Hello everyone, welcome back to The Plunder Den. In today's episode, we're going to do another paint tutorial. So I thought it'd be a lot of fun to uh, do a paint tutorial on uh, a ship. Uh, so when you're playing Blunt Plunder, ships are important. <laughs> uh, and uh, I thought we'd start off with uh, the bark. So this is a product made by Firelock Games. Um, it's one of the, the smaller ships. Uh, but it's a it's a great ship to start off with. So uh, if you're just learning how to play the game and you uh, just want to learn the basics of sea battles or, or amphibious assaults or anything like that, uh, this is the ship to get. Uh, and it's, it's a little easier to assemble. Uh, and uh, we are going to cover on how to paint it. And uh, I think I'm planning on doing two videos here uh, where we... Uh, I do uh, the painting of the base, uh, and then maybe we'll do uh, ones where I paint the cannons and uh, we go over on how to make sails uh, and flags for our ship uh, and uh, really uh, trick out our boat and get all the accessories on there. We'll put the rigging on and, and do the rest. But in this uh, video, we're going to just cover the painting of the base so and the preparation of, of, the, of it uh, for the paint. Uh, so when you open the box, uh, you get this. This is a, a lovely little resin ship. Um, a fantastic detail on here, which uh, bolds well when you're painting it. Uh, you get to really bring out all those wood grains and all the fine details that are on uh, this uh, miniature. Uh, Firelock Games makes excellent uh, ship models, and uh, they're a lot of fun to paint. So uh, also uh, what you get in there, you get uh, your mass. Now uh, you get a little baggie here, you got your rigging in here, and uh, you got your cannon pieces uh, to build in, you got swivel guns, you got swivel guns. Uh, and then these are all your pieces uh, for attaching your uh, rigging and mast to the boat. So they get just, uh, you just push these out and uh, put them on there. Uh, you get an instruction manual, and then you get this awesome, awesome card. Um, you can see on here, it gives you all your uh, stats and statistics on on the on the bark, uh, its characteristics, and it, it's a, really a game card uh, that uh, helps you identify where the damage is. In you can see all these little little dots on here. This is where you mark off where your damage is on your boat when you get hit, and uh, you know it tells you what kind of guns you can carry and all sorts of stuff. It's it's a really cool card. So in the back here, you got all the traits and stuff. Uh, but anyways, so that's all the stuff you get in the boat. Uh, but in this video, we're going to turn this, uh, and I got the finished product, into this. We're going to paint this up and uh, paint that resin model and make it look like this. So I decided to uh, uh, do a Dutch. This is a, a Dutch bark, uh, and uh, that's what we're going to be painting, uh, painting today in today's video. So let's get down to the uh, let's get down to the table and uh, start painting. Okay, um, so before we do any painting, uh, we have to prep this bark. Uh, and so what I'm showing here is. Uh, some of the things I like to do. So as you can see, there's a little wooden pieces there. Um, those are to hold the rigging and there's some gun ports. Uh, these are pieces that you're gonna have to add on. I like to use uh, Gorilla Super Glue, just uh, super glue it down and it'll stay in place. Uh, usually I'll let it sit for 24 hours. Now, the reason why I have it on those uh, insulation foam uh, is just so that uh, I can do the reverse side. Uh, so I make a little contraption here. It's kind of a, this is made out of dollar store foam board. I make a little slit in it and put the gun port in it. Uh, I use that so it props up on the ship. Um, so you can kind of put it at an angle and this way you can get your gun port to uh, stand out straight. Uh, a lot of people is asking uh, how do I get them out straight. Uh, that's how I do it. I use uh, those on there and it just sits on top of the ship and uh, It'll dry that way. Uh, so when you flip this around, once that's dry, uh, you know you let it sit there for a while, then you can flip it around uh, and do the other side. Um, 
And then just cut those, uh, I forgot to mention to cut those gun ports out. They they have resin in them when you first get them. So I just showed you the, uh, I use an X-Acto knife and just to cut it out uh, and trim that up um, before I glue the gun ports on. So that's pretty much uh, it on here. Uh, I'm just showing you a close-up uh, how it sits on there. So you can see that uh, on the gun port itself, I'll show you here in a sec. Uh, you can see it goes into like an L shape. So it actually sits nicely uh, onto the uh, onto the ship. Uh, that means uh, the two points of it, uh, two points of contact, so it sticks to it. All right, so we're done with the prep. Um, we're going to move on to uh, the paint. So similar to uh, if you were following the uh, temple uh, uh, paint tutorial, um, we're going to start with uh, our black craft paint. So after I get these little dollar star foam boards off the gun boards first. All right, so just taking one look over, make sure everything's good. Got anything that's loose on there. Um, because we're going to slap the paint on. All right, like I said, uh, this is what I start with. Um, same with, as the temple. Uh, it's folk art, black, multi-surface paint. Um, this will give you a nice deep base of everything. Same brush I used to do the temple. Just long paintbrush, small end on it. Good to get into all the crevices. And we're going to go ahead and paint this. So uh, on the uh, temple build, I, I just kind of glossed over the black because there really isn't uh, any real uh, technique to it. You just had to cover everything with black paint. Um, but on the ship... Uh, that's not the case. Um, I kind of mentioned before, if you let uh, this craft paint dry in clumps, it, it'll dry in a clump. So you need to spread it out. Uh, and, uh, you know, you want to keep all those lovely uh, grains on the uh, uh, on the ship. And then when this dries, it, it does uh, shrink and, and sucks itself right into all the... Uh, so you don't lose any details. Don't, don't get me wrong. You don't lose any details here. Um, but uh, you will have to go over a few passes uh, because it shrinks and you'll see uh, parts of the ship are not uh, fully painted. Uh, but you can see I'm pulling my brush with the grains of, of uh, on the boat. You probably can't see it in the video, but <clears throat> like I said, there's excellent detail on these boats uh, and there's grains on, on the ship itself. So right now I'm just pulling uh, the black paint along with the grains. So I don't get any clumping, and it looks nice and smooth. It dries nice and clean, um, and it'll be ready for our next colors. Again, just illustrating here. Um, this is the inside of the boat. Uh, doing the same thing, um, pulling with the grains uh, on uh, the edges. Here I'm just showing you a close-up. Um, Hoping that you can see some of the textures on there, but I assure you there is uh, lots of wood grain textures, and it'll highlight when we get to the other colors and we lift those uh, grains up. Um, but right now, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're just going to keep covering this ship uh, with black paint. All right, just taking a look at uh, it's been drying for 24 hours. Uh, just taking one more look to see if we, we've got everything uh, before we start our next color. All right, going back to my tried and true again. Um, it's real brown. <clears throat> All right, so similar to the previous uh, temple build, uh, just put some paint on that plate and kind of get it on your, your brush again, on the tip of your brush. <clears throat> and we're going to use the old uh, paper towel as well. Looks like I almost started without doing that. <laughs> uh, well, when you're painting and filming, and uh, sometimes you, you kind of mess things up. Okay, so anyways, you're you're tapping it out on the paper towel. Don't forget that step. Otherwise, we're going to have a big clump of brown on there, and it won't look so good. Uh, so dry brush technique. So we're just going to... Now we're going in the opposite direction of the grain. So remember, we put the black paint on, uh, and we were going with the grains. Now we're going to go uh, uh, with the uh, against the grains. 
and why we're doing that is uh, it'll highlight uh, those boards better. Um, if we go with it, we're just going to kind of fill in the gaps where the black paint is, and it won't be as apparent. So that's why we're kind of going in the opposite direction. Yeah, there's a few times I go the other way, but in general, you want to tap down, as I'm showing you there. That way you, you pick up all those details, those awesome details that are on this boat. So I'm just going to keep tap, tap, tapping all this, uh, this real brown on here. Just going to go around the, the whole ship. So I'm just going to fast forward it here. I think you get the adjust of the technique. Uh, I'm going to do that on the inside of the boat and all around, but uh, we don't need to watch the whole process. Uh, just kind of giving you uh, an idea of what I do first. Okay. Just showing you uh, how it looks uh, after we've completed the real brown dry brushing. As you can see, it's, well, it's not black anymore, but we got kind of a deep brown. Now, if you wanted to, you really could just leave it at this color uh, and maybe just highlight the, uh, you know, the framing and, uh, and maybe paint the inside of it a different color. Uh, that's a great thing about uh, using this craft paint. Uh, you can really decide what colors you want to go. You can stay with this uh, dark color. I've done all my ships. Uh, I've done one where I didn't even go to the next step. I just left it that color. I like the dark color. So I just showed you the, the bark brown, uh, similar to the temple. That's the next color we use. Uh, it's the next step up in my brown colors. It's all full cart, multi-surface paint. And I'm going to build up those layers on our boat here. Same technique as the real brown. Uh, looks like uh, this time I remembered to go to the paper towel. <laughs> uh, and we're just going to get that just the right color. So even more tapping on the paper towel than before. Because every time you go, it gets lighter and lighter, right? So uh, you want to have less and less of that paint. But you can see right away in the demonstration here, uh, it really adds all, really quickly. Any raised area is going to be uh, touched with that color. The only thing I regret is I, uh, well, I did a little bit better there, but to uh, get this uh, ship a little closer into the camera for you guys, just so you guys can see a little bit better what I'm doing. But it's just dry brush technique, um, just pulling down uh, and uh, same way. See how I'm going against the grains? And I'm just trying to highlight all the grains in there. So I'm going against it, not with it. Uh, same goes with the sides. Now the good thing about putting that original black coat on there is it actually seals all those pieces. So remember all those super glued pieces we did in the first step? Uh, I just uh, want to make a note that the craft paint uh, hardens and, and just like it does with a temple. And it kind of is an extra protection. It seals everything in place. Uh, because I like to go kind of kind of crazy when I'm doing my uh, tapping here. Uh, so I'm really giving this boat a really good work over. Now, if you don't let it dry properly enough, what's going to happen is if you tap it so hard and you didn't let your black dry, uh, one, the black's going to mix with the paints you're using, which is not what you want. Uh, you just want it to be kind of an undertone. Uh, but also, it, it'll pull the paint right off. Um, so you don't, you don't want that either. So you want it to have a good 24 hours to bond. And then you can do this technique that I'm doing here, just really tapping it away. I just want to point that out um, because uh, th those steps are important. Um, you know, I've been impatient and go, oh, well, I had it for, <laughs> for some time. And then unfortunately, I came back and I started pulling paint off. And I'm like, oh, what a disaster. And I had to repaint it. And yeah, it's not a good thing. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're pretty well almost uh, done here with this color, um, and we're going to move on to uh, the next color. All right, just giving you a good look uh, how everything turned out uh, with the uh, bark brown at it. As you can see, it really lightened up the boat, um, and uh, you can really start to see the wood grains coming out, eh? We're really starting to see uh, it uh, coming out here. All right, we're going to go to my old Pablo, right, friend? Pablo the Orange. Art and uh, folk art craft paint here. Uh, and uh, we're just kind of kind of uh, do the same thing as we did the bark brown, but even uh, lighter. Uh, now, 
uh, if you want your ship to have a more orange feel, and I've done that in some of the, some of the Dutch uh, Dutch ships I've painted, um, then maybe you want to add a little bit more of the orange color. Um, but that's really up to you. Uh, again, just tapping it out on the paper towel here. And just getting it uh, uh, ready here. All right, just going to tap it on again. Same as uh, I did with the uh, all the other colors. But I would say I would even do it even uh, lighter. Than, uh, than before, um, just because the color is so bright, right? Uh, again, <laughs> like I mentioned before, you can go crazy with some of these colors and uh, then you'll get big joint uh, orange streaks all over the place and not really what you want. All right, going again against the grains. Um, so I'm just gonna speed up the process here a little bit. Uh, I think you kind of get the idea. It's gonna be the same as the other two colors. Uh, just going with the grain and trying to pick out some of that, some of those highlights. All right, just showing you uh, what happened after we're done with the uh, the Pablo, what it looks like. So you can see it's really got a kind of a weathered uh, orange feel to the whole ship. Uh, it really looks uh, good, uh, and really what I was looking for. So we're gonna go a step further now. And uh, we're going to go with the uh, even lighter color. So I'm going to, unlike the temple, I'm going to switch my brushes. I don't want the mixture of the orange and the uh, camel color this time. I want the camel just to kind of be over top of it uh, and really just tapping it and highlighting everything. Got a little bit of space here <laughs> so I can show you guys. All right, so same as before, but just uh, the only difference is that uh, I've changed up the brush. And I went to a uh, little bit of a smaller brush. And another reason why I did this is because I'm going to uh, paint my deck top this color. Um, and I'll show you that in a minute, uh, how I do that. But I'm going to tap the outside. Again, uh, sorry about the uh, camera angle here. I got kind of too far off to the edge there. Um, but I am going against the grains again. And just tapping down. I really did uh, take a lot of the paint out of there. Um, this will highlight really quickly. But I find that the camel is excellent for making uh, weathered wood. Uh, it really, really brings out all the grains. Uh, and it's kind of in the, the brown family. So it... Uh, it really highlights your, your wood better. Uh, oh, there I made a too big of a blob. But uh, it's not too bad when I'm on the top of the deck. So you see how I put so much paint on there? And I just kind of made three drops on all the different parts of the deck. And then I just make a kind of a, like a circular motion. Uh, because I really, really want this to be really, really light. So I'm going to kind of just hit the entire higher inside of this uh, boat. Don't worry too much about the edges in the inside of the boat. Uh, we're gonna paint that a different color anyways. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned at that at this stage uh, at that. Uh, so uh, we're just gonna kind of do the inside. All right, hopefully I have a, yeah, it's, yeah, there we go. So you can see what I'm doing here. They're just kind of circular, going back and forth, going with the grain. Just kind of really trying to make it somewhat of one color, but I don't want to cover uh, over all of all those good wood, wood tones I've already put down. Um, and if you can't get right in the corners, that's great. But you got some shading and shadowing already. Um, so by putting those dark colors down first, we've already uh, shaded certain areas of the inside of the boat. Um, and we're just lightening the more weathered parts and the parts where people would be walking on and... Um, you know, the, the lighter wood in, in the boat. All right, so I'm going to fast forward it here. Uh, we're uh, just kind of, I just wanted you to see the, uh, that uh, portion there while I, when I did the inside of the boat. Okay, we're back here, and you can see uh, now that we put it on there, it's really, really brought out all the wood grains, uh, which is just what you want. 
You can see all the different colors uh, in there that we've added, and it's really giving it a nice weathered look. So for me, this is kind of like the blank slate. Uh, you got it to a point where you've taken, you've addressed the wood part of the ship, uh, and now we want to put in the colors. So we're going to start with this Army Green by Army Painter. And I like this color because it's, it's not a really popping green. I don't want this to be ridiculously bright. Uh, I, I think uh, in the time period this would be, it would be more duller colors. So I'm going to go with a, and it looks more weathered and uh, more appropriate. I don't think uh, it would match the rest of the boat. I went with something bright. All right, so I'm going to go with the Army Painter. Uh, this is a, a dry brush brush, but it's a really, really small one. And in the last video, I went to the medium size one. But because the ship is so small, we're going to go, we're going to go with a really small one. Uh, I'm going to tap that paint out in the paper towel again. And I'm just going to go in every one of these little little ports because I want to make the, the the wall, the inside of the wall of the uh, of the boat here. I really want to make it this uh, uh, green color. So this is the darker green. We're going to be adding a lighter version of this. Uh, like I said, Army Painter has good step-ups in colors. Um, so you can we can uh, highlight it. So we're going to lay down that darker green first, and then we're going to highlight it with a lighter uh, lighter green. So I just really wanted to show you how I do this. Again, you don't have to worry about too much. Uh, and, and, uh, what I want to mention is just uh, do circular motions in the center. So similar to when we painted the temple, and we kind of just want to do the highlighted colors, we just kind of start it from the middle and work our way out and just kind of work it. Uh, that way it fades out into the corners because you still want to have all those nice uh, dark tones that we put in the corners and it really gives it uh, shadows and weathered look and uh, it really gives you that uh, look we're looking for. I think I'm going to make this uh, top two port doors on here. I'm going to make that same green. I'm going to put that green on there as well. Don't get uh, both of these in here. See, uh, just that circular motion. Um, not too too heavy-handed on there. You don't want to completely cover it. You still want to have some of those undertones of the wood. So let's go back into the inside of the boat. So I'm just going to keep going uh, all the way around uh, uh, the ship here. All right, let's move on to the uh, next uh, color here. Actually, before that, uh, we go to the next color. I just wanted to show you uh, what it looks like uh, once we've completed all that uh, green in there. Now, you know what? I decided while we were doing, uh, I'm going to paint uh, a stripe on the back. Um, and in the back of the ship, that same green. So I'm going to use a more finer brush this time. I uh, just decided, you know what, I need a little bit of that color carried over to the outside of the boat. Inside looks great. I'm going to move in a little bit of this color uh, to the outside. So this is a really uh, fine brush. Um, I think it's zero size. I get it at uh, Michael's uh, here in Canada. Uh, and uh, its uh, designation is 0, 0. Uh, it's it's really 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 small brush but it's good for getting into these uh, fine details here I'm just gonna quick put some paint on the uh, I decided I'm gonna do the top of these so uh, like I said, uh, when I start these uh, projects, I, I don't really have a plan. I just kind of, uh, when I start putting things on, um, you know, I just, uh, it things that will look right to me, and I'll add colors in certain areas, and that should, that should how it be. You should have a basic understanding, of, you know, basic idea of what you want to see. Um, but uh, things are going to change as you go. Uh, when you put things on, you might not like what it looks like. All right, so uh, that's, I just wanted to show you those uh, details there, those other things that I did on the boat. Um, I'm just going to show you, I did the bottom of the gun port doors, uh, inside of the boat, uh, those two doors, uh, the back of the ship, the sides, just all the different areas I touched with that, uh, with that green, that army green. All right, so this is that lighter green I was talking about we're going to add to highlight. 
and it's called Scully Hide uh, by Army Painter. And to me, it, it just seems like another lighter tone uh, than the previous screen. So we're going to continue on with that same uh, smaller dry brush from Army Painter. And right now, we're going to tap the centers of all these lovely little green areas that we've created. Um, and we're going to create highlights. So it already has a bit of a highlight, but we're going to kind of go more to an extreme level and really, really uh, define the, the green from the edges uh, and really take it to that next level. Uh, right now, I'm just uh, blopping in different areas and then I'll go back and uh, work it in. So similar to, like I said, the temple, I just blop it in the center and then I'll go back and, you know, put, dab it in the center and just kind of work it in. So you can see how much that, that really is uh, highlighted everything really takes it up uh, a few notches. So this uh, will help it uh, really stand out uh, from a distance. Uh, when you're looking at it, uh, it'll really pop and you'll really be able to see all those the details in there. Yeah, I really like this stage. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why, but I like specific stages of uh, painting it. Uh, you always you kind of want to get to that point uh, to see what it looks like because, uh, um, well, at least I I do anyways. It's in my mind. I can see what it looks like, and I really want to get to uh, the, adding those colors on, so I can start seeing what the uh, finished product's gonna look like. All right, so I'm just kind of showing you all the different areas I plan on doing. Uh, all the areas essentially that I touched with that dark green. I'm gonna hit it with that scully, um, the lighter green. So for that high detail areas, I went back to that detail brush because uh, I really can't use that uh, dry brush in those uh, stripes and, and on the top of those smaller details. So I ended up using the smaller brush uh, to execute that. So I'm just highlighting, just showing you exactly where I went. I didn't want to uh, uh, show all that in the video uh, just to, to save time on this video, just to... You kind of get the idea what I what I did. I just I went from the center and worked my way out, same as I did before. All right, so we're gonna go to uh, a yellow ochre, uh, and we're gonna mix it. We're gonna do a little mixing on our on our uh, plate here. So this is a, a a brush with a flat end on it, and it's got longer and flat. I like to paint um, the uh, details on my boat with this. So I'm gonna mix these two together. I like to put them both on the plate uh, side by side, uh, and then you've got a little place to mix in the middle. So as you're going through this paint, you can keep pulling to the center um, because you won't have enough when you mix it the first time, but just keep going back and, and you can keep mixing the color. Uh, so you have enough paint to finish the project, right? There's nothing worse than putting a color down and you mix it all up <laughs> and you didn't put enough paint down. Uh, and then you're trying to recreate it, uh, and it's a disaster. <laughs> it just doesn't come out quite right. So uh, it, it's best to have two big blobs there, and then you can keep pulling on it. So you can see that this brush is flat and square. Uh, so it's easier. I kind of pull forward. Uh, I don't know if you can see that uh, the way I'm pulling it on there. Uh, because this is all raised, uh, as long as I at a certain angle... Uh, you can paint this fairly quickly that way um, and not uh, sploosh all over uh, the other details we just put on, all that that lovely green that we put on. I do plan on painting all the posts on the inside uh, and the outside, um, all the trim on the outside of the boat. <clears throat> so we're going to cover a lot of areas with this, uh, with this orange. All right, so we're going to move it a little forward here. Um, just uh, you can kind of see what I'm doing. It's going to take some time to get around the whole ship and, and paint this. Um, but I'm using the same technique to do the whole boat. 
um, and I don't think we need to uh, watch that. So we're, we're going to fast forward through this uh, and get to the next step. Okay, we're going to go to this uh, vintage white. This is the color I like to use on the bottom of my boats. It's, it's kind of an off-white. It's not, I don't like it to be bright, bright white, um, but I like to be a little off-white. Uh, and I'm kind of showing you a closer of that brush I was using again. Uh, same brush. All right, so the, this is a finished uh, product after I've painted all that orange, uh, kind of an orange-yellow ochre mix. It kind of gives it like a duller orange color, which I think is perfect uh, to match with that green. So we're going to go to this uh, vintage white. Like I said, it's more of a creamy color um, than, than uh, white. I also like to use it uh, for painting my sails as well. Um, I like to use an off white and then come in and add white highlights afterwards on my sails. All right, so we're going to do this. Uh, I decided I'm going to do this bottom base here of the boat um, just uh, above the waterline uh, and we're going to give it this uh, vintage white so again this square brush is really good for painting um, this kind of uh, detail so I'm just going to kind of show you what I do here for um, how I paint that on there. Try to get a little bit closer here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Now this stuff, uh, it will be kind of transparent to, to be honest when you put it on a few times. So you're gonna have to do probably uh, two coats at least. Uh, I've sometimes have gone three coats, but I really like the color that it finishes up at. So that's why I, I make the effort to, to put those layers on. All right, so just going to give you a quick peek at what it looks like. So it really is a nice, like I said, it's not overly white, white, but it's just an off-white, uh, and it really looks good. So I decided I want to do a two-tone, and we're going to go to this mild brown wash. Um, so the great thing about having all those wood tones that we already have down, uh, it will take really well to adding washes. So I kind of want to make a stripe on the side of the boat, um, that's a different tone wood color. So we're gonna make a darker, darker stripe on there. And it's not overly dark, but just enough to distinguish uh, as different from the one above. Uh, just adding more uh, contrast or interest to the, to the boat by adding that extra dark color to it. And I think I'm gonna to touch the back uh, of the boat. Uh, probably the very front uh, of the boat as well uh, with that same uh, wash. Uh, after I've done the uh, the brown wash, uh, this uh, I'm going to add uh, uh, some other uh, uh, colors on top of it, some more washes to darken it, uh, like a dark tone and a strong tone over top. So this is just to add a little bit of more of a rich brown color to it, and then I'll add other washes to darken it, uh, really to separate it from from the rest of the boat. Uh, you can see right here uh, what I was talking about, the front of the boat as well, uh, and then I'll hit the back of the boat. All right, so we're going to fast forward it here. Um, just uh, You can see what I'm doing, and uh, it's really just rubbing it on. That's what, what I'm doing right now. All right, let's take a look at what uh, how it turned out. As you can see, there's that, that two-tone there that I'm looking for. Uh, I am, like I guess mentioned, we're going to go darker with it. Uh, right now, I'm just at this stage. Of, when I get to those other washes, uh, I'll hit the, that stripe up again uh, with those other washes. All right, so before I do any of the washes, I'm going to put some gunmetal on here. Uh, and really, it's for the... Um, the hinges that are on the back of, uh, of the rudder here, uh, and then kind of where the ports, uh, where the swivel guns sit in, um, just going to add a little bit of metallic to it, just to add a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, contrast and, you know, probably sitting on a metal frame. So I'm just going to highlight it here with some metal. 
Uh, I'm doing this step first before I put in the other washes uh, because uh, once I put the metallics on, I, I usually use a strong tone over top uh, and it kind of gives it a more rustic metal look. Uh, and then we're going to go to a special effects paint that Army Painter makes uh, called Dry Rust and we're going to add some rust to it uh, where, where the hinges are and really, really add some character to uh, those hinges. So just really going down to those fine details, uh, just take it over the top. Okay, so let's just take a look. You can see I hit those little gun ports, just pointing out that I put some metallic on there. And I did uh, the little, on the... Uh, gun port doors or some metal framing i know i i put mine upside down that's <laughs> purely because they glue better on that way to be honest uh but uh if you want to make them correct you can uh, glue them the other way but they're a little, little more tough to do it that way all right so i'm just showing you how it looks with that metallic on there it really really looks uh fantastic back there i love that metallic color on there and gives that good contrast and detail in the back all right, so now we're gonna move into uh, a strong tone wash. So we're gonna hit all sorts of different areas in the boat, uh, the inside mostly to add, uh, you know, shadowing and just wear and tear and, you know, where grime would have uh, accumulated over the years. Um, just gives it a good weathered look, uh, putting it on the deck in certain areas. Uh, so we're gonna kind of just uh, go through all that. We're gonna put that on there. Also, I'm uh, touching those metallics I, I told you about. So I'm even gonna pull it up uh, all the way up into the green uh, and try to really add uh, color to it, uh, add those uh, washes to it. All right, I just wanted to show a little bit more closer to the inside um, in here. Um, just kind of showing you where I'm touching up on the green. You can see I've hit on those doors on the top of the boat, uh, and I'm just pulling that uh, strong tone up, um, and just kind of also overemphasizing the definition. So we added that bright green uh, highlight, and now we're kind of doing kind of a grungy highlight, <laughs> I guess, around the corners and anywhere I think the dirt and mud and grime would have accumulated and. Um, it could be water stains, all sorts of stuff and uh, manner of stuff in a boat um, that's uh, in use. Um, so just kind of hitting all those areas and it just really, really, really defines um, that wall. So we're going to go around the whole boat and, and uh, do this at all the green areas. Um, I do plan on touching up a little bit of the stripes as well. But I really kind of wanted to show you what I'm doing there. Um, and how I get that. All right, I'm just going to kind of uh, hit that those metal hinges. I just wanted to show you that I'm hitting those metal hinges too. I had mentioned uh, before. Uh, and that really kind of gives it a rustic uh, metal look. Um, so this gun metal that's on there right now, uh, my army painter, and then uh, we put this strong tone over our top of it. So it's kind of a three-step process. Uh, of course, we're going to add that rust after at the end. All right, I think we're going to move on to the next color. So similar to the uh, temple, we're going to use this dark tone uh, when we did the temple paint. Uh, we started with the lighter uh, colors first and then put the darker ones afterwards. So... I'm gonna kind of go really to the edges inside there and go in with this dark tone. Um, again, this is something that you can go a little crazy with um, and where you add too much in there. So just be careful, just add a little bit in there. You just want a little bit of highlight to really darken the corners and edges and, uh, and it really give you those two different tones. So you already got your strong tone down there. Now you're gonna add this uh, dark tone on there. I'm going to hit all the same areas that we hit before uh, and even pull up some of it up on the green. 
Um, I don't know if you can see in this picture, but uh, those two port doors on the top, you can see that I put some strong tone behind it. So I, I kind of do it that way. Any raised areas on the boat, uh, kind of assume that the boat's going forward more often than not, and um, the weathering would be behind those doors. Um, same would go with uh, when the masts are on the boat. Uh, I do the same thing as well. You can kind of see that, well, obviously I don't have the masts in there. Uh, I do want to make a note, uh, and I did mention at the beginning of the video, when you're putting the craft paint on, um, make sure, uh, like, you can see that there's one of the ports where you stick the uh, the mass in. Um, it's not a good idea to put the craft paint in there um, because it will get a little thicker in there. Uh, and <laughs> it can sometimes be hard to put the mass in afterwards. So you can see the one in the middle, I did it properly. I left it just white. Um, you don't need the color in there. Um, and that'll make it easier to put your mask in afterwards. Uh, I've had some situations. Same goes for the swivel gun uh, ports on the top. Uh, don't get crap paint in those ports. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be taking a... I think at one time I had to take a nail to it, uh, to be honest, to try to get it... Uh, to get <laughs> swivel guns in there so just be careful uh you can easily avoid them you don't have to cover them i don't know why i, I thought i needed to cover them before <laughs> they're gonna have a swivel gun stuck in it or a mast in it you don't need to paint in there nobody's gonna see that anyways uh and then it makes everything fit a lot better so i'm just touching those areas i was talking about uh you know behind where the mast is going to be uh and where the those ports on the top the doors on the top would be so just kind of where I think the weathering would appear uh, on a boat. Uh, that's always mostly going forward, right? So uh, things are pulled back uh, on it, and and that's kind of we get kind of a smearing effect from there. Um, so I kind of do that on there. Uh, also, that uh, orange ridge that separates the two decks. Um, I usually pull it from behind there as well. Anywhere where I think that's going to happen. All right, so once you've added all your washes, uh, you might want to go back, um, hit that camel again. And, and why I do that is uh, is to kind of take away the, sometimes it's too uh, extreme between the washes and the colors you put on the deck. And if you just put a little bit on your brush um, and you can kind of uh, blend it in together. So this way it kind of uh, like a hue uh, opposed to, you know, a wash slash paint, you can really tell the difference between the, the wash is shiny and, and the paint is not. So this this way you can kind of give it a subtle uh, variation. Um, so this is this is a pretty important step um, to really um, get back there. And you know what, to be honest, I, I sometimes have spent hours doing this <laughs> particular step. You don't have to, just uh, kind of uh, blend it where it, the washes hit the rest of the paint. Just give it a once-over kind of, uh, uh, and that'll kind of uh, really uh, mix the two together so you don't have that defined definition between wash and paint. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm not going to cover it all uh, because, like I said, I could do this for hours. <laughs> and and uh, that French frigate that I posted a while back, um, I, I think I did spend hours on it. I was just kind of wasn't happy was I really wanted a gold kind of yellow deck and I, I was using the same technique just kind of going back and back and back with that paint and and sometimes I would hit it with a wash again and then go back it was crazy <laughs> but once I'm happy with it then I'll leave it so I'm pretty happy with uh, the way the bark is here so we don't need too much um, um, highlight too, uh, too too much blending Anyways, we are going to uh, move on to the uh, final stages here. All right, so this is that uh, effect paint I was called, Dry Rust by Army Painter. Uh, and this is, Dry Rust is fantastic, by the way. <laughs> this, this effect paint works great. You don't have to, bar you barely have to put anything on, and immediately it looks rusty. Uh, I've used it on uh, anchors. I've used this on uh, when I made my pirate version of this bark. I, I put some rust on the cannons and uh, anywhere to add a little character to it. But uh, I like to hit the hinges uh, on here with that rust. It really, really makes a huge difference. Uh, just gives a lot of character to it. Gives a little more age to it. Um, the areas you would expect to see some rust. 
Uh, Army Painter has uh, lots of different effect paints. They, they have a, a blood spatter one that's pretty cool. Uh, I've used that on some of the swords on some of my pirates. Um, and they, uh, they have the wet effect, so uh, if you want to make something uh, look uh, wet uh, or flat or matte. So they have those uh, also uh, effects as well. So a really kind of a cool, uh, you know, things that you can add into a little extra details. Right, so we're pretty well getting to a wrap on this uh, this video here. There's not much more detail to put on here. Um, I hope you guys in, enjoyed uh, watching this uh, painting of this uh, ship. I hope you'll be around for the second half when we do make the sails and paint the anchor and accessories and all the other cool stuff to really uh, take this uh, boat to the next level. So if you guys really like this, uh, make sure you uh, smash that like button. Uh, and uh, think about subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching, everyone.